Oh, sweet. Looks like I got a monkey. Wait, what? Monkey. Um. Monkey! What the heck came in? Get your filthy monkey hands off of me! Oh, that explains it. That's right. Today we're looking at a figure that I've been waiting all my life for. Full Power Frieza. When Tamashi first announced they were making their new legendary Super Saiyan Goku figure, I knew this figure had to be coming out. And I was right. Tamashi fully revealed that they were making a Full Power Frieza, and I was instantly overwhelmed with excitement. This figure looked so damn good in the promos. It looked perfect. It was perfect. But then a major problem arose. This guy was a premium Bandai exclusive figure. Why Tamashi? It just doesn't make sense to me. Because first off, this figure ended up being like $105 after tax and shipping. Second, the Goku is a normal release, and this figure is supposed to go with that Goku, but yet this one is premium Bandai. And then third off, for those of you who want him now, you will have to overpay on the aftermarket for him. So I'm sorry for those of you who might want this figure after the review. But this figure is now here, and I am very excited to share him with y'all. So now, let's get this review started. Just like every premium Bandai exclusive release, Frieza comes in a brown shipper. Nothing special about it, except that it's just a box. But what's inside of it is really special. Hello, monkeys! Frieza's box design has a white and pink color scheme with a huge blown up image on the front. And honestly, it's maybe a little too big, because a huge portion of the figure is literally covered up. And I don't really like that. Let's just hope half his body ain't missing. Then the top of the box has nothing special going on. Left side of the box has the promo images of the figure, while the right side just has its name. Bottom of the box has the figure's name and a promo image of the figure that is looking really devious and sinister. The back of the box showcases the figure fully as we can fully see it, some of the poses it can do, and some of the accessories it comes with. The box is dope and all, and I like looking at the figure in the packaging, but it is time to free Lord Freeze. As soon as you take Freeze out of the packaging, you will need to do two things. Take the little plastic pieces out of his torso area, and then put his tail on. Because right now, Frieza got his little tight booty hole out. So let's get his tail, and boy, this just doesn't look like no damn tail. This thing got a big ass dick vein on it, and this thing is throbbing. But, once we put Frieza's tail on, we can now see this figure in all its glory. And all I have to say is, wow, this figure is stunning. He looks like he was ripped straight from the Budokai Tenkaichi games, and I am loving it. He's freaking jacked. This dude hasn't skipped a workout or a cycle. He has Death Star delts, huge ass arms, a big juicy chest, tiny waist, nice muscly legs, and a very huge back. This dude might just be Mr. Olympia. I think it's safe to say Tamashi nailed the proportions on this guy. And to go with his muscles, he has big plump veins all on them. Also, all throughout his body, we can see his battle scratches. These are just sculpted in with no sort of paint on them. And speaking of paint, this dude actually has some shading. He has some subtle light blue shading all throughout his body, and I think it looks pretty damn good. Then the purple parts of his body feel like a different plastic than the rest of the figure are really shiny, and I think these look really good. Overall, his appearance is literally phenomenal. Well, besides one thing, they did the factory stamping thing right on the top of his lower back, and it is very visible, and I hate that, because I was planning on taking a lot of freezing back shots. But other than that, this figure is one of the best looking SH3 arts ever in my opinion. I mean, just look at him. A masterpiece. Now let's talk about how this figure feels. My copy actually feels pretty damn good for the most part as he moves really fluidly, but I still have ran in one issue with his upper diaphragm being a little too tight and I'm scared to move it fully, so I'll probably have to lube that joint up. Other than that though, this figure moves great and has legit been so easy and fun to pose, so this figure looks freaking phenomenal, but are the accessories just as good? Let's find out. Frieza first comes with four beautiful interchangeable head sculpts. He comes with a smirking face. This face looks so damn sinister. Next, he comes with an angry teeth gritted face. And on this face, I really love how the eyes are offset. It really brings a lot more emotion out of this face. He then comes with an upset, scared, or shocked kind of face. This face reminds me of when Frieza realized he was truly defeated by Goku. Also, it reminds me of someone holding in a massive shit trying to make it to the bathroom. <laughs> and lastly for faces, he comes with a yellow face. This face is my favorite that he comes with as there is so much emotion going on. The offset eyes, the dilated pupils, and the wide mouth all make this face great. All the faces look amazing and have great detail and as we can see some monster veins on his forehead and battle scratches. An important thing to mention though is that when swapping the heads, all of them but the smirking face will pop the neck off with it. So this is definitely annoying as it makes swapping the heads a tiny bit of a hassle. What I do to combat this is that I hold the neck down and then pop the head off. Then he comes with a DLC face effect of Goku getting hit in the face. This is a really cool face plate. The scratches are actually colored in and his cheeks are sculpted to look like they have just been hit. This has been a really damn fun face plate to use when posing these figures together. Very, very, very happy with this DLC faceplate. Frieza then comes with five interchangeable hands. He comes with two fisted hands, two special attack hands, two clenching hands, two key blast hands, and then two open hands that have peg holes in them. The peg holes are made to hold his death saucers. That's right, this Frieza comes with two death saucers and they are freaking badass. They have legit been so fun to mess around with. It's freaking awesome when Dragon Ball figures come with some sort of energy effects, because in my opinion, they all should. Also, they aren't heavy, so Frieza can hold both of them effortlessly. Then lastly for accessories, Frieza comes with clenching feet. This one when he is either flying, fighting, or just humiliating his opponent. 
And that concludes the accessories. Am I satisfied with them? Yeah, I am. I mean, the Death Saucers are just so fun, and the fact they gave us two of them is amazing. All the faces look great, and he comes with a decent amount of hands. Only things I think it would've been cool for the set to come with was a Frieza getting bitch slap face, and some sort of optional parts for him to be displayed being cut in half, like how it is in the series when he's just a floating torso dripping blood. They sorta of did this with the Mecha Frieza, which was really dope, so I feel like this figure could've came with something like that. Oh, and by the way, this figure should've came with a stand, because one, he doesn't really stand the best by himself, and two, Frieza in his form was in the air for the most part, and that's how I feel is the best way to display him. So a stand would have been nice to come with this $100 figure, but despite that, I've still been having so much fun with his accessories, so now, let's take a dive into his articulation. To start off with, his head without using the neck doesn't really look up or down much at all, but with the neck area, it can look a really good ways upwards, but when doing so, we get a lot of gappage. Then he can look a good bit downwards, but I don't know what he's going to see because his juicy chest is definitely blocking his view. His head can look side to side and move well all around. His arms can go this far upwards, which isn't bad for how bulky his shoulders are. You can also twist at the shoulders, and he has a bicep swivel. His elbow's only been slightly past 90 degrees due to his bulkiness, and he has typical Tamashi wrist movement. Then for his butterfly joint, it actually works really well. His arms can cross over one another, which is amazing. Then his arms can go this far backwards. Then for his upper diaphragm articulation, it can bend this far backwards, and then he can bend this far forwards. There is a twist at the upper diaphragm, but it is really tight and I don't want to risk breaking it. Then with the upper diaphragm and waist articulation combined, he can bend this far forwards and then this far backwards. His waist can into us a little bit and then allows for a decent amount of torso tilt. Let's now talk about the legs. His legs look like they might not be able to go forwards due to the design of them, but they can actually go a decent bit forward. The crotch area is a soft plastic piece so it doesn't hinder the articulation as much. But one thing to mention is that you want to make sure the leg flap doesn't get caught in the crotch piece as it will hinder the articulation. But as I said, his legs can go up this high and then they can go a good bit backwards and they actually go pretty far outwards. There's a twist at the upper leg, double joint in the knees, and ankle articulation that's honestly pretty mid. Oh, and his tail moves around. Despite how bulky and jacked this guy is, he poses wonderfully. It's always such a joy when figures are easy and fun to pose. It's been a blast testing this guy's limits, so now let's do some figure comparisons. First here is Frieza next to the SHV Arts Legendary Super Saiyan Son Goku. These two scale pretty well next to each other and they have legit been so fun to play around with as there is so much fun to be had. Next here he is next to Final Form Cooler, the Brothers of Destruction, and their full glory. And here he is next to Z Broly. Wow, I literally feel like a kid again. Some of my favorite Z villains and their coolest looks all together. We are truly blessed. Then here's Full Power Frieza next to Full Power Jiren. Who do you guys got winning in a bodybuilding competition? Here he is next to SHV Arts Final Form Frieza. Here he is next to SHV Arts Super Boo. Then here he is next to the Awakening Goku. Here he is next to Beerus. Here he is next to the Demoniacal Fit Goku. Here he is next to the Romance Don Luffy. And lastly, here he is next to Storm Collectibles Yujiro Hama. Frieza vs. Yujiro. Who do y'all got? For my final thoughts, I have to say this is the best SHV Arts release of 2024. This figure is a masterpiece. He has been such a freaking blast to play with. The posing ideas are endless and have been coming so easily. Tamashi did a really great job with this release. He looks awesome, comes with great accessories, and has great articulation. It's literally a shame they made this a premium Bandai exclusive release as I feel like everyone should get the chance to own this figure. So sadly if you want this figure you're going to have to buy them on the aftermarket which isn't the cheapest. But if you got the money and want this figure bad enough then I say cop because this is a true Dragon Ball Z fans dream freeze of figure. And that's all I have to say about this guy. What villain do y'all want to see next from this line? Personally I want Buhan as he's my favorite villain. But I also want Android 13 base form, Janimba, Kid Buu, and a new perfect cell. But it'll probably be forever as they are making those Dragon Ball Diamond figures. That concludes this one guys, I really do hope y'all enjoyed this video, I appreciate every single one of your guys' support, I'll see y'all in the next one, peace.